Hello, my name is Adam. This here's Bert. I'm in a band called Taking Back Sunday. He's in a band called The Use. And you guys sit in a whole bunch of questions that you would like to ask him. And well, I'm here to read them to Bert so he can answer them for you. L'chaim. First question. This, this, this one comes from Peter Mason. He says, Peter Mason lives in a Jason. He says, do you ever find it hard to deal with the fact that that many so-called fans out there say your only good albums are the first two? Dude. <laughs> There's so many of these things like I'll get, like I'll like see it on. It's, it's one of these like, I'm hugging you, but I'm hitting you. Yeah. Like things, okay, but. I hated your last record. Yeah, your new dude. record's okay. Well, I'm so, your biggest fan. Yeah, yeah, it, it's like, but th thanks. But um, does this create more pressure on you guys when you're recording a new album? It's not about that for us. I'm, I'm sure for anyone who makes music that they care about, it's not about that. A, a, a record is a snapshot of a time in an artist's life. It's exactly what's going on behind the eyes. So um, what you might think is um, your own personal opinion, and that's what art is all about. It's very subjective. There's a lot of music out there. Um, so we, we love when you enjoy our records. Um, we don't mind when you don't. I don't oh, know. Keep good, your fucking good. opinions to yourself. <laughs> go, go make your own goddamn. Yeah, make a record. See, see how easy it is. All right, but um, <clears throat> this one's from Stephen Marl. Stephen Marl lives in a hall. Oh, that's good. Good rhyme. Good <laughs> rhyme. Uh, what inspired you to take a political route with your most recent <laughs> music? I think a lot of it was um, I recently moved from the U.S. and felt really kind of. Um, outside myself and noticing how things work all over the world. We, we have a world that's still two-thirds communist, which is pretty um, interesting thinking about what communist has become compared to what the idea that Marx had. But I just had a daughter as well, so thinking about the type of world my, my little one would grow up in has kind of forced me to look outside myself a little bit. And um, I'll notice there's serious problems all over the world, whether it be with wealth inequality or um, actual slavery still exists on the planet. And I think it's pretty important and also really cool for people to be involved and to give a shit about what's going on. I think that it's kind of becoming trendy. And we were never cool, so I'm sure as soon as it becomes the coolest thing, we'll have moved on to the next not cool thing. But yeah. <laughs> hopefully we will have saved the planet by then. It's not impossible. Yeah. So Sarah Dino. Sarah Dino, mama mama Dino. Well, 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 it's Sarah Dino Carl. Oh, Sarah Dino Carl. Lemon and Vivaral. Okay, good, good. Lemon and Vivaral. Lemon and Lemon and Lemon and. <laughs> what is your go-to sad song when you are feeling down? Um, a lot of Jeff Beck songs could be my go-to, uh, but uh, my one of my favorite songs of all time is um, "Angelus" by Elliot Smith. Mm. Some reason breaks my heart. I lived in Los Angeles for a while. Um, I love poker. No, I don't. I don't know. Okay. It touches me. Good talk. <clears throat> so Dana Jacqueline Serberg. Dana Jacqueline Serberg likes to eat sherbet. <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> um, <clears throat> this is getting. We probably got to stop with that. That's getting old <laughs> really quick. <laughs> Generation Throwaway is one of the most inspirational songs I've heard in a long time, and really makes me want to fight for what's right. But how can one person make a difference? What can Dana, Jacqueline, Serber, do. Well, one of my heroes, Noam Chomsky, and I don't really believe that people need heroes. Um, it'd be a lot better if we could all be our own hero and in some kind of way be inspired to lead instead of follow a myriad of people on Twitter. But um, one of my heroes says that the, the, the most important thing you can do in trying to change the world is never, ever um, make a statement like there's nothing we can do because you've only solidified that there's really actually nothing you can do. Um, you'd be surprised how little it takes to actually change the world we live in. Um, for example, they were trying to build a McDonald's near my house in Roselle in New South Wales and it was within like five kilometers of an elementary school which people have a problem with. We don't want our kids to grow up and be fat corporate slobs, slaves. Um, and so they petitioned and they actually stopped the McDonald's from being built. And that's just, that's the, 
it, how little it actually takes to do the right thing. One thing, just stop shopping at Walmart. Yeah. Period. Just don't do it. Just, just, you have the power. Your, your fiat currency is power in your pocket. And thanks for the uh, compliment. <clears throat> I'm sure Dana Jacqueline Serber would appreciate that. That's She's it. great. She's a nice lady. Okay, Diana Warren would like to know. <laughs> I'm not doing it. If you could listen to one album for the rest of your life, what album would it be and why? It's tough. I really enjoy... It's really tough because people are people. You know, you find out things about your heroes that you maybe are disappointing. I loved Cat Stevens growing up, and um, to find out that he's such a kind of convoluted, confused. I mean, beliefs make people irrational. That's the bottom line. If I had to listen to one record for the rest of my life, I would, I guess I would listen to, that's tough, man. Um, Sam Cooke has a song on Saturday Night, which Cat Stevens later covered, but it is the worst cover you could do. A, like, I feel like if you're going to cover a song, you need to bring something new to it. Oh, Saturday Night. It's, but it's so white. Like, it's just, it's the whitest song. Anyways. I was so, I was so, so such there's, a fan until I found out he was calling for Salman Rushdie's death when he wrote the Satanic Verses. But if I had to listen to one record. Really? Yeah. Yeah, but then now he's denying it, as you would. He um, writes songs. Why? I mean, he's not a. I don't know. Okay. I would pick um, yeah. Chumba Wumba Tub Thumping. I get no doubt, but I get up again. Are you laughing? Cause I get knocked down, but then I get up again. You yeah. can't. You, you can never go and keep me down. I uh, have a but. Is that the song to where they have like they're just naming all these different. Whiskey drink, vodka yeah. drink. So I have this buddy, and then he, um, uh, his name's Greg, and he thought it would be funny one night, and he actually went to a bar and played that song on the jukebox, just on repeat, and then ordered every <laughs> drink that they would name, and as it would come up, he would, it was, pre it was pretty funny. I saw, He's like, I got a whiskey drink, I got a vodka drink. <laughs> I saw, like, a, a shout out to that song on The Simpsons. You probably saw it. It's like... Homer, he's like, I drink a whiskey drink, I drink a vodka drink, and when I have to piss, I get to use the kitchen sink. <laughs> That's genius. No, I actually didn't. Genius. That. That is funny. 